Welcome to Leash Reviews. This is gonna be a short video where I just give you some thoughts about the TV series Justified, something I normally don't do. I just realized that this one has an insanely high rating. It sits at, I think it's 99 or 95% on Rotten Tomatoes and around 85% or 8.5 on other rating systems. And I think it's completely unjustified. I will not go into too many details because that would be something I'm not prepared for here. I will say that I initially picked up on this because I had never heard about it before, but then people started recommending it around the beginning of this year. So I decided to watch it after seeing how well it was rated. And I will say that the first season is good. The first season has an overarching story, but at the same time, every single episode it's an episode in its own right. There is a crime that needs to be investigated and solved. And they still continue this trend to some extent into the second season. But after that, it's just none of that left in the series. Every uh, season three to six is just one story with no small stories in each episode. It's just one overarching story that has to be extended. It has to be dragged out. It has to be filled with all this I will give it this, it doesn't have as much filler as so many other series. It doesn't have as many convenient or inconvenient things happening. It kind of does earn its length in at least most of the seasons, but that doesn't mean that what you're watching is, is good. What I really liked about this was the exact thing that we have all these small individual episodes that were small stories in, in, in their own right. And I think one of the big issues with this is that the protagonist is not that interesting. It is very quickly revealed that there will be pretty much no character development at all in this series for the protagonist. He is more or less the same person when he begins as he is at the end of it. He does have to find his priorities to determine his priorities and find a balance in his life where he starts off being completely focused on work and has then to re orient himself to, to to lead his life towards focusing more on private matters, on, on the people who care for him in his personal life. But this is actually such a minor element. It is sometimes mentioned in the episodes, but it really doesn't matter too much. He really doesn't change that much as a character. Even at the end of this uh, sixth season, he hasn't really changed. Throughout all of these episodes, he is a man who struggles a bit with his past, who struggles a lot with his past, with his father, with his friendship to, uh, to this to this man he worked with, who is now a criminal, and he has to balance his ex-wife and his new love interest. He has to balance these different things. But it doesn't actually lead to any development. It's just him struggling with this balance in his life. It is him struggling to find... It's not even him struggling with him to find any happiness in his life is just he, all his actions are determined about what he should do as a marshal, what he should do according to the law and what he wants to do on a, on a private level. And that actually doesn't make him that engaging a protagonist. In my opinion, people who are going through an arc, people who are developing, people who are changing throughout the story and who are constantly facing new obstacles that they will have to or new situations they will have to adapt to and that might change them as people are much more interesting characters in movies than someone who is just the same gunslinging macho man with a codex and his own opinions that never ever change. I mean, he is basically the modern day Clint Eastwood from the Spaghetti Westerns, where in those movies he's also not really going through a lot of development. And you do think he's cool. In the, I mean, I do think he's cool in those movies. I do think Clint Eastwood is doing a good job in his old spaghetti westerns. I do generally like him. And sometimes he still actually goes through some development. Sometimes he does go from only being self-centered to actually caring about the people around him. But it's not always the case. And the thing is, with those, you're, you're watching, what, one and a half hour to, to three hours. That's the runtime of those movies. Here you have... I don't know exactly how much time, but maybe 50 hours with a guy who doesn't go through any real development, who doesn't really... It's just not good. That it, That's one of the biggest issues with this. It has one really interesting character, Boyd Crowder, because he actually has an arc. He develops a lot. He 
goes through all these things and he's a constant development. He In some of the season, he is developing more of a humanity. In some of them, he's becoming more malicious. And especially when he is getting closer and closer to the edge, afraid or very close to falling over, he gets more and more desperate and he does more and more heinous things. So he's the really good protagonist antagonist in that he is a despicable human being, but he is sometimes also the lesser of two evils. And he is played well, his character is developed well, he's going through all these different things that you actually end up rooting for him in many situations. Or at least that you have complicated feelings about him. And that's why his character is really interesting in this movie. Yes, he is a bit too weird, he feels a bit wacky for this universe, but I do like him. I do think that that's the main character that actually makes it not entirely torturous to sit through these th- seasons. There is one other character who goes through some development. She is the love interest of the main the main protagonist, and then develops and becomes a love interest for Boy Crowder, the main antagonist. And she goes through some development. She's a decently interesting character. I just never really liked her acting too much. I didn't like her character that much. I do th- like what they do to it. And I'm trying to figure out what my problem with her character actually is, why I don't like it more, because I probably should like it more than I am. And I think one of the big issues is actually that throughout the series, she's presented as this very attractive woman. Everybody comments on how beautiful she is, at how how sexy she is, at how everybody wants to be with her, how lucky anyone who who is with her is. Again, I will not spoil too much, but, but let's just say it's not just men who feel this way. Personally, I don't find her attractive. I think if I try to put on objective an objective view, I would say she's probably moderately beautiful. I know that uh, I heard Americans use these things like you can be a an Oklahoma nine, but that makes you also Chicago five and a California two. And I don't know if that's that's the thing that she's so hot for Kentucky. I am not trying to say anything bad about Kentucky because I haven't been there. I haven't been to anywhere in the States. It's just for me, having everybody say she's so pretty and so beautiful when there are so many other women in this series who are actually more attractive or at least as attractive as her, but are not treated as such. And I don't know, it's just such a big part of her character is being, she's not exactly a femme fatale. I don't know, I think some of my dislike for her character is the apathy I feel or the frustration I feel with being told how I should feel about her. I don't like when movies and series tell me how to feel about things. I want to make up my own opinion. So yeah, having everybody telling me how beautiful she is and not being able to see it myself. I don't think she's doing a bad job. The actress is probably really good at doing her job. It's just the character in the show I don't like that much. And everybody else in the show are either serviceable. There are a few really annoying performances. There are a few quite good performances. And it's just not the best cast and not the worst cast. So I think not, not to do it, drag it out too much longer. I will. I've already said the positives. So you know, the first season is really good, or at least quite good. And Bart Crowder is an interesting character. I like how they develop his arc. That's the positives. The negatives are. And I'll just mention a few. And uh, this is my absolute biggest issue with this series, and it's actually something that pretty much starts in the first season. Of there seems to be very few consequences for people that even when people are sentenced and go to prison for manslaughter, for possession of drugs, for selling drugs, for a conspiracy to a murder, whatever, whenever that happens, they seem to be let out of the prison within half a year. I thought that each season would be a year, but no, I think each season is half a year or even less than that. And I will not... Without spoiling too much, there is a pregnancy in it that starts, I think, in in season two. And then at the end of season six, that child is still a small breastfed baby. So the longest anyone could be in prison for in this show, from what you see, is is maybe two, three years. But that doesn't even happen. You have those people who are actually doing really bad things, who are let out of jail for no real reason within... A few months, there is one case where it actually does make sense, where because nobody wants to testify, so there's not enough evidence. I will buy that. That's in season the first season, I think. Yeah, I'm quite sure it's the first season. I will buy that. It's okay. 
But some of the other people who are let out of the prison is just it's done so poorly, and a lot of the people who are actually let go, and there's so much evidence against them. And I think my biggest issue is this, with this is that knowing America, especially knowing the South, people are in prison for life for doing basically nothing. There is a guy who beats up an officer of the law with the intent of killing him, and he's let go. He's let go because of lack of evidence or whatever. It's just, it's so frustratingly bad. This, this, this pretends that America has a prison system, a legal system, that is like Disney World, or like having that no matter what you do, do you just have a slap on the wrist? Only when, of course, it's convenient that people are serving time for things they actually shouldn't serve time for, and that's another issue in this series. Someone is unless this I could have misunderstood. Because I, I will say I, I'm not a lawyer. I don't understand these things completely. But the person is just about to be let out of, out of prison. Then that person is accused of doing something that the person doesn't do and is set, sent to another prison. I think it was a jail first and then a prison. But then the person who accused the person of doing this testifies or admits that this didn't happen. So why is the person... This, oh no, sorry, this might be confusing and cryptic. But why is the person who is then given the sentence or having the sentence extended for, for doing this, why is that person not just let out of prison? Because the person served his, uh, his or her time. Only reason why the person was kept in the prison system, the legal system, was because this person made a false claim. And when that false claim is retracted, why is the other person still in jail? I mean, of course, things are probably a bit more complicated than, than I pretend they are, but this, for all the people who are let out of prison, that person should be let go. But no, that doesn't happen. And actually, that that plot thread, that, that, that person being potentially put back in jail or remaining in jail is what derives season five and six and so I mean that that's like that's the one of the main things going on those seasons it's just one of those where you think about it it's actually really stupid it's really bad it's really poorly thought out that is my absolute main issue I will also say that it being a series and it having to extend its story to constantly come up with new plot threads it does fall into convenient territory a lot by that I mean people often happen to show up out of nowhere People often do things that are really stupid and then they wouldn't do. And I will say a good example of this, just a really, really, really stupid character decision, is that someone fools some other person to confess to a crime while recording it. And then instead of taking the recording and going straight to the police, as the person intends to do, the person, right after the person testifies, takes up the phone and says, Ha! I got you now. I recorded everything. And the person confronting the other person is much weaker, much smaller than the person that is confronted. So, of course, it goes south. Nobody would ever do this unless they're really, really, really stupid. The thing is, the person doing this confrontation is not stupid. It's one of the smarter people in the series. So, it's one of those very convenient things that are just there to... to to heighten the stakes, to create an, an, a more intense situation that gets resolved anyway, right away. It gets resolved right away. And the, the first two seasons, especially the first season, does not have as much of this as the other seasons. Okay, I, I think I'm done here. What I'm trying to say is that the first season is good. The second season is decent because the play between or the interactions between the protagonist and antagonist are really good. It has some other decent characters. It starts introducing some really annoying people that unfortunately a lot of them are in the other seasons as well. And that's unfortunate. Also, if you do watch season two, you will probably be very tired of hearing my own apple pie because you hear about apple pie all the time and it gets so frustrating at the end. At first, it's a cute thing. It's a bit of a good idea, especially when you know what the apple pie is, but, but then it gets really annoying. It gets really annoying at the end. Um, so I, I guess I can say that I can actually recommend the first season. I definitely don't think it's worth 8.5. I think it, it's a solid 7.5. Second season is maybe 6.5. And after that, 
Even third season is okay if you can actually manage to only watch one season because I think that's the problem with series. They they, they drag you in and, and, and hold your attention against your own will, like against your better judgment. You keep watching and watching and watching because it's right there. It's so convenient to keep watching something that you actually know is bad or is at least not, not worth your time. And that's what happened to me with this series that, that I was already in it. So I wanted to see how it ended. So if you can watch one season without falling into that trap watch first season maybe watch second season <laughs> but stay away from the rest third season does have some good performances and has some good dynamics there's this really creepy bad bad person who is introduced and i do like what he does but that's the good thing about that season the other things are not i mean again not a terrible season especially the season four five and six that are really bad if you haven't watched this series already, because I, I was apparently, I don't know where it has been or where I have been for not having heard about this before. But if you haven't watched it before, maybe don't watch it. But again, it's, it's your life. If you if you do like gunslingers, if you do like new westerns, um, if you do like crime series and drug series and, and things taking place in the South, this might be just up right up your alley. It wasn't right up in my alley, not for all of it. Also, I'm glad I didn't have any bourbon in my house because this series really made me want to drink bourbon all the time. Probably wouldn't have been good for my health. But damn, this show makes me want bourbon. Gives me a craving for it. But yeah, that's it. Hope this wasn't bad. It's a very big departure from my normal format and I probably won't be doing this again for a very long time. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your day and, I uh, don't know, watch something good. All bad. I don't really care.